Niacinamide is a darling ingredient of the skincare world. It's a form of vitamin B3, but I'm going to wager that you put too much attention on using niacinamide on your skin and not enough attention on nourishing your skin with niacinamide from the inside out. This video is the third in a series where we deep dive into superstar skin ingredients. We're going to cover niacinamide in food, in supplements, and in skincare and reveal whether this ingredient is really worth the hype. So for some pretty surprising science, stay tuned. So a quick hello if you're new here. My name is Fiona and I'm a registered nutritionist with a master's degree in nutritional medicine. On this channel, we talk about how to eat for great skin because true skincare starts on your plate. If you haven't already, please consider hitting the subscribe button because it really helps the channel. Right, so let's get into this. Why should you care about niacinamide for your skin? As mentioned, niacinamide is the active form of vitamin B3. It's sometimes called nicotinamide, but the names are interchangeable. Like most B vitamins, niacinamide boosts cellular energy. And in your skin cells, this translates to mitigating the damage from the assaults that come at your skin every day and creating a strong skin barrier. This diagram shows how much vitamin B3 does in your body, and it's a lot. Now, because vitamin B3 is involved in so many processes, when people are deficient in it, it really shows. They develop a condition called pellagra, which amongst other symptoms causes red, flaky, and intensely itchy skin, particularly in areas that are exposed to sunlight. Basically, this is just a massive breakdown of the skin barrier. Now you're probably thinking, this seems pretty extreme, and surely most people aren't deficient in vitamin B3. Well, you're probably right, but also, not entirely. So are you eating enough niacinamide for your skin? The richest sources of niacinamide or vitamin B3 are meat and fish and also wheat-based whole grains. Your body can also make niacinamide from a particular amino acid in protein. But here's the issue with that. More and more people are transitioning to plant-based diets, so not eating any meat or fish at all. We know that lots of people, and particularly women, don't eat enough protein. And the whole gluten or wheat-free thing has been going on for quite a while now. What all of that means is that less than optimal intakes of niacinamide might be more common than we think. And that is not good news for our skin. This is a picture from a case study of an Australian woman in her 30s. She developed pellagra after eating what she deemed to be a healthy diet, but which was ultimately a very restricted diet. She went through rounds and rounds of medical investigations only to eventually be diagnosed with pellagra and vitamin B supplementation sorted this out. Now obviously a case study of one person is noteworthy but it doesn't indicate a trend. But increasingly there have been reports of pellagra in developed nations like the US and also in several parts of Europe. As one researcher points out, the growing focus on healthy eating, often without dietetic support, increases the risk of nutritionally restricted diets. Now I'm not trying to scare you because pellagra is still very rare in the West and other developed nations. But what this does show us is that for strong, resilient skin, paying attention to your niacinamide or vitamin B3 intake can't hurt. So how to maximize your niacinamide intake? Far and away, the easiest way to eat sufficient vitamin B3 or niacinamide is through eating high quality, responsibly sourced meat and fish. The RDA for vitamin B3 is 16 milligrams a day for men and 14 milligrams a day for women. And you can easily hit that through eating a large chicken breast or turkey breast or a large fillet of salmon. The good thing about these types of foods is that they also contain protein. So if your body needs to, it can take some of that protein and turn it into more niacinamide. If you don't eat meat or fish, it can be a little harder, but you can still eat sufficient niacinamide through eating whole grains and also some fortified foods. The other thing that you want to pay attention to, which not many people talk about in relation to this, is your gut health. The friendly bacteria in your gut not only help your body make niacinamide from protein, but they also help your body to absorb that niacinamide. And if you want the niacinamide to get to your skin, you've got to be absorbing it well. I deep dive into gut health and skin health in this video, but the headlines are that eating lots of fresh fruits and vegetables and also naturally fermented foods like kimchi and kefir are great tactics. Okay, and what about supplements? Based on everything we've learned so far, I'd say 
say that if you're eating a reasonably healthy diet that includes meat and fish occasionally, you're likely getting enough vitamin B3 or niacinamide through food alone. But let's say you eat an exclusively plant-based diet and you're also gluten-free, then you might want to consider supplementing with a vitamin B complex, something like this one. It's generally better to take B vitamins together rather than large doses separately because they all help each other out when they're in your body. Whichever one you choose, make sure it contains vitamin B3 in the form niacinamide rather than niacin. Now niacin is another form of vitamin B3, but this one will actually make your skin flush. While we're on this topic, research does also suggest that taking vitamin B3 or niacinamide can prevent the development of new actinic keratoses if you're particularly prone to them. These are dry, scaly patches of skin that appear in sun-damaged areas. So again, this finding is interesting because it's likely that the niacinamide is going in there, boosting the skin cells energy and helping to address that barrier damage. Now the dose you need for this effect is quite high, it is several times the RDA. So if this is something you'd want to explore, you need to talk to your doctor and actually you should always talk to your doctor before you start any new supplements. Moving on to niacinamide in skincare. And this is how most of us are familiar with niacinamide. And the skincare world is having a love affair with this vitamin at the moment. Products with niacinamide have been shown to reduce dark spots or hyperpigmentation, reduce wrinkles, reduce redness, improve acne, and improve skin barrier function, which all sounds amazing. But if you're detecting a tiny hint of skepticism, it's because if you actually look at the research showing these effects, you detect a few yellow flags not quite red flags. There are three things you should know. Firstly, most of the research showing these wonderful effects is funded by the skincare industry. This is not unusual in cosmetic research, but it should make you a little bit more dubious when all the results sound wildly impressive. Secondly, a lot of the actual studies have some pretty noticeable design flaws. For example, one study looking at acne compared niacinamide with a topical antibiotic that's routinely prescribed for acne. Acne. The study found that niacinamide was almost as effective as the antibiotic at clearing acne. Now again, this sounds amazing, but when you dig a little deeper, you find that the study only ran for eight weeks. And this topical antibiotic is known to take up to 12 weeks to work for acne. So is this really a fair or accurate comparison? And thirdly, it is important to realize that most of the results attributed to niacinamide are pretty subtle. This is the most well-known study showing the anti aging effects of niacinamide. And even this study points out that niacinamide can reduce wrinkles by about 5%. Now, to put that in perspective, a topical retinoid can reduce wrinkles by up to 25%. So niacinamide is five times less effective than that. Before it seems like I'm totally anti-niacinamide in skincare, I'm really not. Some studies have shown genuinely compelling results, like these photos showing the reduction in pigmentation illustrate. And I do use niacinamide in my own skincare routine. I've used several products from several different brands, but at the moment I'm using this one, which is Medicaid's Clarity Peptide, which contains niacinamide. I do find that this helps to reduce oiliness in my T-zone as the day goes on, but the effects on the patches of pigmentation I have and also wrinkles are too early to call, but I will keep you posted. One thing I will say though, is that even though skincare brands love to shout about how gentle niacinamide is and how well tolerated it is, some people do do seem sensitive to it. So if that's you, you're not going crazy. I think there are a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, all the research looking at niacinamide in skincare uses it in concentrations of 2 to 5%. But lots of products commercially available have concentrations of 10% or even higher. Now why this is isn't exactly clear, but it's likely that brands are just responding to customer perception that more is always better, but it isn't. And secondly, because niacinamide is so popular at the moment, it crops up in loads of different products. So in your morning routine, you could apply a serum and then a moisturizer and then a sunscreen, all of which contain niacinamide. So it can become a situation where it's too much of a good thing. Now, this niacinamide doesn't irritate my skin, whereas others have, and this is still a 10% concentration. The only thing I can think is that Medicaid are known for their attention to detail when it comes to formulation, though the fact that it's more gentle for me may well be down to that. Other highly regarded niacinamide serums are The Ordinary's Niacinamide and Zinc, which is super affordable, and also two Australian brands stand out. There's Synergy Skins Vitamin
vitamin B and also alpha H is vitamin B. So you can experiment and see what works for you. Now because most niacinamide serums are water-based, you typically want to use them after you've cleansed but before you've moisturized. So to sum up, niacinamide is the active form of vitamin B3. It has lots of roles in your body, including creating a strong, healthy skin barrier. Eating high quality meat and fish is the easiest way to eat sufficient niacinamide and you can also get it in some whole grains too. If you want to supplement with it, go for a general vitamin B complex that contains niacinamide and check in with your doctor first. In skincare, it has some subtle but appealing effects like brightening and gentle anti-aging, but you should know that it's much less potent than other skincare ingredients like vitamin A. Thank you for watching until the very end. As ever, I hope you found that useful or interesting or both. If you liked this, you will like another video I've done on vitamin C in skincare, which I'll pop there for you. I hope to see you there. Otherwise, I will see you next time for another video on nutritional skincare. Thank you for watching.